Let me tell you a joke from the defunct German Democratic Republic, recounted by Slovenian philosopher Slavoj Žižek. A German worker gets a job in Siberia. Aware of how all mail is going to be read by the censors, he tells his friends, let's establish a code. If a letter you get from me is written in ordinary blue ink, it's true. If it's written in red ink, it's false. He writes regularly. His letters are always full of good news. Everything is wonderful here. Stores are full, food is abundant, apartments are large and properly heated, movie theaters show films from the West. There are many beautiful girls ready for an affair. The only thing unavailable is red ink. This is how ideology works, not only in totalitarian conditions of censorship, but perhaps even more in the more refined conditions of liberal censorship. One starts by agreeing that one has all the freedoms one wants, and one merely adds that the only thing missing is the red ink. We feel free because we lack the very language to articulate our unfreedom. Dystopian novelists provide us with the red ink, the words to express our skepticism of oppressive and deceitful governments that help us to keep our guard against totalitarianism, the abuse of power, and political hypocrisy. George Orwell's own name has been popularized as an adjective. Orwellian names the world he imagined and we live in, describing policies of control that employ surveillance, disinformation, and propaganda. What are the words written in red ink, the language we use to articulate our lack of freedom? Open up any news site, you'll read about corporations employing Big Brother surveillance laws to spy on their own employees. Media and politicians alike accused of being masters of black arts of political newspeak. Political analysts citing ripe examples of doublethink, and social media companies attacked as part of the new thought police. Dystopian novels invent the tools we need to read history, arming our collective critical imagination. And the key provision they offer is a language to talk about what people do with language. Examining the power of words, symbols, and rituals in political life and consciousness. Wielded by those in power to maintain the status quo, they can also be used to give voice to dissent and to prepare us to imagine that things could be otherwise. Like any other kind of day You'll pretend we're walking home Cause your future's at stake My set is amazing